Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you who watch my videos would be aware that I recently fitted a finned Nismo diff cover to my rear wheel steer Nissan 370GT. Motivation being that the diff in these things runs pretty hot, uh, particularly when you're highway cruising or giving it a bit of punishment. So the idea with the finned diff cover was try to reduce temperatures. Uh, you can see the temperature sender in there, which you guys be aware of now. Since fitting the Nismo cover, I've noticed that there is almost no difference in temperature. It seems to take a little bit longer uh, before it sort of comes up to temperature, but once it's heat soaked, um, you know, there is almost no difference. And in my opinion, that's due to the fact that there is not enough airflow over the fins on the cover. The fins that hang along the bottom are, would be the only fins that I, I think are sitting in the airflow. Uh, I don't think the air is going up the back of the cover at all. In my opinion, this would be a dead zone in behind the differential and where the mufflers and everything are. Air would just sort of scoot underneath and possibly roll around slowly in there or just be a, a complete dead zone. So what I'm about to do is make a little bit of a scoop to feed air up over the cooling fins on the cover here. So we'll go in and I'll show you some of the templates I've made out of cardboard. So ideally what I'd like to do folks is, is create some sort of a scoop under here that picks up air and takes it up around all the fins just to maximize the airflow and, and really take advantage of these fins because as you'd be aware if they're in a dead zone they're doing absolutely nothing. So this is what I've got here folks, you can see it's just a little bit of a scoop made out of some cardboard and it fits, I can just get it up on there, up on here, somehow, oh, yeah, that's it, it sort of sits up on there like, like that. So what it's going to do, I'll swing around and show you from the front, front in a second, it just allows air to be picked up from under here and uh, funnel back up through the fins and then exit either out through the top or through a bit of a gap that I'm going to create in here. Obviously I'm going to space it off the cover a little bit as well just to help with getting a, a little bit of a volume through there. I don't want to actually create a restriction by pushing it too closely so it'll be off and down slightly but uh, that's sort of the plan. And if we have a look from under here folks, just excuse me, the lighting is really terrible. I've got a sort of a handheld torch. You can see how that is going to kind of sit in there. It's about the angle that it sits on. And that just gives me a nice sort of a little duct that's just going to catch the air. And the only way for it to get out is to go through the fins, up through the top. And uh, hopefully give us a bit of cooling on the way. So the method I'm going to use to attach all this, folks, it's going to be sort of a two-part system. So I've got this uh, piece of cardboard here that I've just sort of made. This is probably the fourth or fifth uh, attempt at, at working out how I'm going to do this. So this, this just sort of all folds up in, uh, in this sort of a fashion. And I'm using these two lower bolts that hold the diff cover on to uh, secure this in position. I'll just take that off and get it out of the way. So this will fold over goes in where those two bolts are and uh, creates a, a bracket like this. Now, what that does, it gives me this face here to drill through and maybe put some rib nuts in or something to hold the main sort of a cover. And hopefully uh, it should all sort of work. This was my final shape after I sort of worked out, you know, all the, all the distances and everything. But I've got another one here that I'll show you. So from that last piece that you saw there, I've then made this, which is another version basically of the same thing with just a little bit more detail in it. So what this has, uh, it just has a sort of a, I could bloody fit the thing in. Without the bolts there, it, it all sort of fits really good. I've put the bolts back in because I've driven the car since I sort of set this up. When that bolts through, these holes here that are marked, they're obviously going to be bigger. That allows me to get a socket through to undo these bolts and, uh, and do them up on the back cover there. And there's also this section here that's removed to give you access to the drain plug and the temperature sender so that will go in that position and then the like I say the scoop section will then bolt to that so we'll head over to the bench now folks and we'll uh, have a look about how we're going to go about making it all right so here's all our bits on the bench 
as I mentioned, that was our sort of, well, it wasn't the first one. I was going to say this was our first piece. I had a few different attempts at this, changing this angle on here, uh, you know, changing the length of these things, uh, just working out how exactly I was going to do it. And, you know, here's the other piece that I showed you up there that I've sort of settled with. Clearance to get the diff drain plug out. These holes are obviously going to be larger here so that you can get a socket through to get onto the bolts that hold the lower of the diff cover and also hold this plate in position. What I've got now is I've dug a piece of scrap out of my scrap bin here and this is some 1.5 millimeter aluminium sheet, just an off cut. I always keep stuff like this because, you know, when you're making little bits and pieces, uh, you can often find a use for it. You can see on there that I've got a layout drawn. So all I've done there, folks, is uh, I've just gone over the section I'm working on with a Sharpie Ugh. with a really big tip on it. And then I've just marked around the, the cardboard with a scriber. So what I'm going to do now, folks, is I'm going to cut this out on the bandsaw, draw all the holes in it and get some bends on it and uh, duplicate this out of aluminium. So that's our bracket cut out, folks. I clean the aluminium up with a bit of acetone and some sandpaper just to clean up all the crap off it because like you saw, it was a pretty daggy looking uh, sort of an old off cut. So what I'll do now is I'll mark some lines where these folds are and we'll just fold her up in the vise. Let's do it. Audio folks, one bracket, all bent up, and ready to go. Just like that sort of thing. Somewhere there. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's go and see if it mounts up. Oh, that's a good sign. I drilled these holes in the back here, only big enough to get the extension through, just to sort of minimize the amount of material uh, that I have to remove, just because there's not a lot to this, you know, it's quite a light sort of a, sort of a thing. Well, that seems to work pretty good. There you go. That's not bad. Still plenty of access uh, for the drain plug up through there. Give you a bit of, bit of a better shot. You can see, quite easy to get the drain plug out. Easy access to the bolts under here to either remove this and uh, remove the case. I'll go and grab the cardboard cover. And that gives me a nice face to mount that to and that is looking pretty good all right the next step i guess is to uh make this thing out of some aluminium sheet what i've got here folks is some 1.6 mil thick aluminium sheet which i'm going to reproduce our cardboard template out of so what i'll do with this because we've got this angle here only one of these is going to be able to be folded the other one will have to be either riveted which means we'll have to leave sort of a lip folded under and rivet it through or weld it and i'll probably just fold one and um, just tig weld the other so what that entails is i'll have to just cut the template or the pattern in the areas where it needs to be folded flat which i'll do right now actually And generally with this sort of thing, what I'll do is I'll try to fold the longest piece and weld the shortest piece. It obviously makes sense. Less welding you have to do, the better. So you can see this is our longest uh, side and this is a shorter one. So I'll, I'll just cut the tape down through that and, uh, and unfold it so we can get it nice and flat. Oh, 
Alrighty, so that sits it flat. And it just fits on the sheet, which is fantastic. So what I'll do is I'll correct any angles, because this has been done pretty much freehand. And there's no saying that, say for example, these two angles here are exactly the same because they've just sort of been roughly drawn on by me. So what I'll do as I go through this is I'll mark it out and then I'll use, you know, a bevel just to compare the angles against each other. And I'll just straighten everything up um, just so that obviously the real piece ends up nice and symmetrical. So I might switch the camera to a bit of a time lapse and, uh, and start knocking this out. Not sure if you could tell then, folks, but I just damn fucked it up. I folded it down to this corner here, which, you know, that probably should be where the point goes to. It probably should have come down like that. But anyways, it's not how it goes. If you look at the template, it folds up like that on the corner. So I done buggered it up. But I've just flattened it back out. I'm going to re-bend it. <laughs> I think I've done it now, folks. She's back to being where it should be. All with a bit of a weakness in it. I might just run a bit of a bead along these bits where I folded it, just because I reckon it's probably going to make it a bit weak. Um, we'll see. Anyway, that looks more like the uh, shape of this. Ah, that's why you should never feel bad about buggering stuff up, folks. It's just part of making things. Well... If I took a bit more care, I'd probably, um, wouldn't happen so much, but you know, mate, I'm just trying to show reality here on YouTube and not edit out all the shit bits. Anyway, I'll take it over and give it a bit of a test fit. Well, there you go. It actually fits. Well, might set up the TIG and weld this, uh, this back edge up. All right. There she's folks all done. Beautiful. So we've now gone from that to that. All in a matter of minutes. <laughs> so 
yes, you can see that's her. So, all there is left to do now is to mount it up to the other plate. So, um, I guess I'll get under the car and do that. Right folks, I think it's all ready to go. I'm putting four fasteners in this. And I've got the bracket that holds it all together here ready to go. I've just put some rib nuts in there as you can see. So that uh, we don't have to get behind it because there is no access behind it. We need to be able to just bolt it through once it's on there. So let's go and fit it up on the car and hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll all be good. One thing I didn't mention, folks, is there's a hole in the side of this bracket here to pass the, the wire through for the temperature sender, just like so, so we don't uh, risk damaging anything. Uh, that'll just clip on like that. So she's going to fit. It's looking not too bad. What do you think, folks? Under there, oh, can't see shit because of the light. Hang on, I'll just go and grab a torch. All right, that's what it looks like from the backside. Like so. And back here. So all that's left to do now, folks, is to test it. So I might work out a little bit of a test program and uh, see how effective it is. I'll probably take it off, I reckon. I'll take the whole assembly off, get it out on the highway because that's the best way to get the diff hot. Um, driving the thing at, you know, 100 kilometres an hour, or 110 kilometres an hour. The crown wheel beats the hell out of your diff oil, which is where all your heat comes from in those circumstances. That's the easiest way for me to get it hot without losing my driver's license around here. Uh, so I'll put it together a bit of a back-to-back -back test, I think, without the duct and with the duct. So bear with me, folks. I'll get this all set up. And when you come back, hopefully we'll be on the road for a test drive. All right, folks, I'm about to hit the highway on ramp. Currently my temperatures are water temperature 93, engine oil 86, transmission 63, and the diff oil is at 46. Now I've driven about probably four kilometers from my house to get here, and uh, it's around about probably a 32 degrees C day. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive up for about Right. Maybe 15 kilometres, chuck a Yui and then come back. So get about 30 kilometres. They're sitting on 110 kilometres an hour. And we'll see what our diff temperature is like when we get back. Alrighty. Rightio folks, I'm approaching my exit. My temperatures are water 92, oil 96. Transmission fluid 84, diff temperature is 92 degrees Celsius. And off the highway I go. I'll just see if it gets up any high by the time I get home from here. Alright folks, we're home. Water temperature 96. Oil temperature 96, 97. Transmission temperature. 92, 93, diff temperature, 93, 94. So uh, that's where it's at. 
pretty easy drive, didn't really push it too hard. Uh, a couple of times when I did give it a bit, the diff temperature would rise up a bit. Um, you know, so it, it definitely goes up when, it, uh, when it's under a bit of pressure, but that's where it's sitting at with that drive. So at least we've got something solid to compare back to back to. So we'll head back into the shed let this thing cool down and we'll uh, we'll put the scoop on. See you shortly. And there it is folks, the final fit. The moment of truth has arrived to see whether I've created something that's actually functional or just another bloody ornament. Let's get out on the road. Right folks, I'm just approaching the on-ramp again. Ambient temperature is exactly the same as it was before. Water temperature 94, engine oil 92. Transmission about 70. Diff temperature 47. So there we go, let's see what happens. All right folks, I'm just about to take the exit on the diff air scoop test. So what we have is water temperature 91, oil temperature 96, transmission temperature 83, diff temperature 88. Thus concludes the test. I'll get home, have another look when we get home and uh, I guess we'll take a look at the results. Right folks, we're home back in the shed. Water temp 97, oil temp 92, 93, transmission 92, diff temp 87, 88. As you can see, right there. All right. So there you go folks, that's the results of my diff air scoop mod. I'm pretty happy with it. It's certainly um, pretty promising, you know, sh particularly the end of the highway run. It was uh, four degrees Celsius cooler than the previous run with no uh, scoop on it. And then when we got back to the shed here, which was, uh, you know, four or five Ks, um, just through sort of stop start traffic, there was a seven degree reduction in, uh, in diff temps. So although not a massive amount of testing, look, the results are what they are. I'll, uh, I'll actually edit them in at the times when we're finishing each of the tests so you can see them on screen to compare them against each other. At the same time, I think it's definitely not an ornament. It actually does something. Obviously over time, I'll be able to do a lot more testing with it. But initial testing is definitely promising. Way better than if I sort of just ran that test and the temperatures were the same, or it was hotter with the scoop on. There's there's definitely an improvement going on there. Whether or not something like this uh, will be beneficial to you, well, you know, that's for you to decide. But for me personally, so far, I think it's going to be a good thing. There are very limited methods to increase the diff cooling on these vehicles. Fin covers is about it for just street driving. And other than that, if you're a serious track driver, you'll obviously be running a pump with a radiator under the car. You know, great setup. Works way better than this, obviously. But, you know, you've got to have a pump running either continuously or on a temperature switch. So it'll sort of cut in and cut out. But as far as, I think, a passive system that makes no noise, that's ideal for a road car, I think this is pretty good. As I mentioned right at the start, Almost no difference just with the fin cover, but once I've added the scoop to funnel air over the fins, there's definitely a measurable difference. So as always, folks, thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed. Bloody pleasure to have you here. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.